thrill and excitement is gone mm -hmm. because that passion phase is really based on the unknown. Intimacy is just not there and it's affecting us. Like if there's a good amount of time that has gone by, like we should be able to have sex. I'm not going to continue to feel like I'm not being heard in this relationship. It's not just about venting, it's about communicating. Why does someone get upset that I'm upset? That's what I feel like calling each other names, like those type of things are not necessary if you're really trying to communicate with your partner. And there's really good news and then there's really bad news here. What's up? Gang, 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 gang. Okay, y'all. We out here. It's a little construction going on, but we're happy to be back on our channel. Yes, welcome back, guys. Welcome yes. back. If you guys missed us, we missed you. Yes. If you um, miss, if you didn't miss us, then we still, we missed, still you. missed you. Yes, um, guys, um, we've been a little absent from YouTube lately, and uh, our personal lives need a little bit of attention. And I feel like, you know, because we're so honest with you guys, we're gonna let you guys know what's going on today. Yeah, we decided to take a little hiatus. To a little hiatus. Focus on the relationship a little bit because mm -hmm. it was suffering. Yeah, it was suffering. Um, and we want to be honest, we've been taking therapy, guys. We've been doing therapy, and uh, with that therapy, it is, it's been helping a lot. It has been, yeah. You know what I'm saying? But I felt like it wasn't enough, yeah. the, at least what, the route that we were taking. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So we're here today with our friend Shan. Mm -hmm. You guys don't know who Shan is. Shan is a beautiful. A sexologist. We'll let her introduce yes, herself. Yeah. Yes. So we're here, and we're going to get some advice, relationship advice, couple advice. Um, and just maybe that she can help us out with some of the things that we're going through. So maybe you guys will take something away from it for your relationships too. Yeah, let's yeah. get it popping. You guys ready? If you're new to this channel, make sure you guys subscribe. If you're not new and you're not subscribed, please subscribe and turn this post notifications on so you know when we post. Please. Hey. hey. What's up? What's Thank up? You. Yo, How are you? this setup is fire. Yeah. We don't hug. Yeah. Oh, we can hug. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> You definitely have. You look beautiful. Wow. Thank you so yeah. much. This is so cool. This whole setup is fire. Mm. Yo, the plants. Yes. I'm loving it. Are you flirting so I'll take your side in this discussion? Uh, I think is that so. the strategy? I think that's what it is. I think that's what it is. That's not what it is. First, it's foremost. working. She's toxic. Yes. Yes. That's what I need. Hey. Come on. Okay, you know, I was a little bit scared because I honestly feel like just because they they are very similar in looks, like, you know, very, very, have very much similarities in their face, you know? So I was like, she's definitely gonna side with her and it's just the eyes. So I was like, I was scared. But since you said that, I know where this is going. Safe space. Safe space. All right, we're here. Hi. We're here. Yeah. Hello. We're here. I know we're all excited now, but it might get like, <laughs> A little serious. A little serious. Um, a little no. serious is good. Yeah. Okay. Thank you for trusting me to listen in this conversation. I'm really yeah. honored by that. Of course. I well, let's start like this. Why don't you introduce yourself yes. so they know, you know, exactly what you do and stuff before we Hi, get into it. I'm Sham Boudram. I look a lot like Natalie, but we are different people. <laughs> and we're not even related. <laughs> yeah. Funny enough. Uh, I talk about sex, love, and relationships for a living. I am a fan. I am a student. I am an educator. I have an educational background in psychology, sexology, and journalism, which I think just makes me professionally curious in yeah. this area. But to me, it was basically came out of a place of this is one area in our life that is so important, mm -hmm. but we invest so little time in learning practicing and becoming masters of because we assume that if it's right it'll yeah. just come natural right and it just wasn't coming natural to me <laughs> um so i invested a lot of time in education and thought to myself wow a lot of other people could benefit from this this kind of information and knowledge too yeah so i made it my mission to make information about sex love and relationships accessible yeah. Um, to wow. make sex education sexy. And that's what brought me here to you guys today. Cause I Sheesh. talk about this online or I talk about it wherever I possibly can. And again, like I said, I'm thrilled to talk to you. Yeah, no, wow. we're really excited about it too. And this, yes, ladies and gents, is why we decided to come talk to her about it. Because she does we know this shit. She does this. Yes. She has a lot of knowledge on it. And like we, you know, expressed to you guys, yeah. our relationship has, you know, it's been suffering a little bit. Especially recently. in that area. So yeah, let's get into it. Well, I yeah. do want to clarify and just say that you guys invest in a therapeutic process together, which is yeah. amazing. Yeah. And any therapist will tell you that the mistake a lot of couples make is they wait until 
there it's too late mm-hmm. to go to therapy right and you guys are like no we go and we ask for help all the time yes, yes. now i'm not a therapist this is not a therapeutic session right yeah. this is a conversation that is led by curiosity and i will provide insight where i can but really i think the best thing that i can do is just be here to be another person to be like what about this what about that yeah no 100 so, percent. especially mm-hmm. with some of the knowledge that you have i feel like you'll have the right questions to ask yeah. so why are we here Uh, yeah we need help we need help um you know i feel like our relationship has been suffering and in that way i mean our romance you know our romantic life has been suffering um we used to be very romantic in the beginning and it was just so much spark so much fire and now it's work 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 and that intimacy is just not there and it's affecting us even the way we work the way we talk to each other and the way we handle each other Mm -hmm. is just it needs a lot of attention and we need to seek help whether it's trying to switch it up understanding each other's love languages or whatever but it's just not it right now yeah and i think we're the good thing is that we're both very curious as to why it's not working and we're both willing to Mm -hmm. go and seek help anyway possible like we you know we we've been trying therapy like talking to you who Mm -hmm. have a lot of education in this field so yeah yeah. how are you feeling the exact same way that easy is feeling in terms of that mojo that sauce yeah i feel like that mojo and sauce is definitely you know a little more mild yeah it's a little mild wasn't it was very spicy before No, it's a little mild. Um, And I think that we have some communication issues. On my end, I feel like a big thing is like communication and how we get along in our day to day. That really does probably affect our um, our romance, because if you're to me, if we're not like mentally on the same page, we're not getting along as much and stuff like that. It's not going to make me feel that like. It's hard for me to just let that go if I feel like we were just arguing. Now I don't really want to come over and be all on you and be kissing you and stuff like that. That's not how, like, my brain works. Hmm. Interesting. What's interesting What's about interesting? That? I feel like I'm that way. You she know, is. I'm very much that way when it comes to intimacy. Like, especially because being a woman, I feel like like with like at least from the the guy friends that i have even if him them him and his partner are arguing or friends they're arguing with their woman it's like they could still have that sex you know what i'm saying me for arguing i don't want to have it like you know it's not turning me on you feel me but she complains about that you know like oh i feel like i'm not wanted i feel like you don't want me enough but it's just like well we're just arguing or when i do give it to you or when we do have sex you're you want to argue right after where it's just like, I'm the type of person, I'm like, yo, if we having sex, especially if it's been a long time, I'm expecting us not to argue. You know what I'm saying? It's not that I wanted to treat it like it's a reward, but it's like, dang, remember those times we could just have sex and it just feels so good after? Why the fuck are we arguing? Mm-hmm. You know? What's the answer to that question? What is like the root of the conflicts? Like, where's that stemming from repeatedly? Um, I think a lack of communication, honestly, and like not really knowing. I think comfortability. Let me just say that. I think the main issue we have in this relationship is comfortability because I feel like the way that, you know, from speaking on my end specifically, I feel like the way, you know, that sometimes you'll be comfortable in talking to me or just like getting so easily frustrated or the lack of trying to court me still that affects us so much you know Mm -hmm. it affects me so much I want to say us because I'm going to speak for myself to the point where it's like all right well where is there room for romance when I feel like and just a normal conversation something that should never lead to an argument is going to lead to an argument because of the way that it's said or the comfortability of like getting so easily frustrated you know, so I feel like that's like a huge thing for me. It's difficult for you to go from conflict to sex. Yeah. What is the conflict? The conflict, I think, is just I'll get too comfortable with her. And like she was pretty much saying, and it's just like, why are you upset about that? You know what I'm saying? And I feel like with her, what she does is she it's like almost kind of like the same, but in different ways. She she argues a lot. You know what I'm saying? So I feel like her always having a response to something is just like um, like not stimulating me mentally, you know what I'm saying? Which is also in, internally like affecting my romance in you know, that type of way, 
you know? So I don't know if that answers the question. I think so. I okay. mean, I think what I hear in summary is that the fact that you guys are not communicating with each other in loving ways or in yeah. ways that make you feel loved or desired by each other all day long is impacting you in terms of the passion and the sexual desire in the relationship, which also causes frustration, which makes the other problems compounding. Exactly. Because now you go to the next day being sexually frustrated in addition to being like, I don't like how you spoke to me. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So it feels yeah. like it's a cycle. Yeah, yeah, totally. And I think that we do, just to kind of touch on something that you said earlier, I think we do share like very similar um, like viewpoints on like, okay, if we're not getting along, we're not really sexually like mm -hmm. attracted to each other or we're not in that mode. But for me, I think like, I'll, I, I can get over things a little bit faster than she can. So if we argue in the morning and then now it's later in the evening and we've been getting along, having lots of laughs and stuff like that, like I'm okay with like, to me that was in the morning. I'm okay with like us being sexual now, but she'll say things like, well, we haven't even been getting along and stuff like that. And then like, sometimes I will feel like, well, dang, it's not a reward, you know, like how she said, well, it's not, you know, she's like, I don't look at it like a reward, but sometimes it feels like it's being treated as one. If like, I don't think, of course, I'm not, I'm not the type of person that wants to have sex like in the moment of arguing and some people are like that. But I feel like if there's a good amount of time that has gone by, like we should be able to have sex, like still be romantic if we've been getting along for the past like five hours. Right. But I guess this isn't something that you can put a we label on. Yeah. Because you might feel that way. Right. And also to resolution, sometimes you could feel resolved. Mm -hmm. And maybe that's because easy apologize to you. Mm -hmm. But in return, maybe she doesn't feel resolved. And so what you could move on about, because you're like, what are you talking about? We ended it. For you, maybe it, it didn't end. Yeah. Yeah. That yeah. could be the case. That is the case a lot of the time. Or do you feel like you're the kind of person who just stays in a stank mood for a long period of time? <laughs> no, I think that um, I can hold, not a grudge, but it's just like, if I'm affected in a big way, you know what I'm saying? It's not that we just argued about freaking who can choose what food it is. It's like an argument sometimes where it's like, yo, like this is could be detrimental to our relationship. You know what I'm saying? I'm not gonna just get over that, you know? Or things, my feelings being ignored. I'm not going to continue to feel like I'm not being heard in this relationship. And because I feel that way and you're not catering, catering to that feeling, it's like, how am I going to be sexually, like, or how, how am I supposed to be sexual right now? Or you know what I'm saying? Or try to have sex, you know? So I'm not in that mode when I feel like you don't cater to my feelings, you know? Mm -hmm. I, there's a couple of quizzes that I wanna suggest right now that I think, what. First of all, foremost, let me just frame this discussion by saying there's really good news and then there's really bad news here. Okay. The really good news is that this is so common that yeah. when we get to a place in a relationship, especially multi-hyphenate relationships, friends, business partners, lovers, homies, dog walkers for each mm -hmm. other, you do everything together, right. right? We can start out with high passion but eventually that passion turns more into a companionship. Mm -hmm. And that's the goal of love in general. You wanna mm -hmm. get to a place where you are now locked in, that's where commitment takes place. But there's a trade-off that happens in that balance because now I know you so well and I can rely on you so much that thrill and excitement is gone mm -hmm. because that passion phase is really based on the unknown. Yeah. Right? The more you get to know someone, the less that you don't know, so the less that there is that sort of adrenaline rush when that person walks around. Yeah. So that's the good and the bad news is that you've now moved into a stage of your relationship where right. You have a deeper level of commitment. You have more responsibilities together. You have to rely on each other for a lot more. And that's amazing. Yeah. But the downside is, is that the passion doesn't become this automatic thing anymore. It becomes something that you have to intentionally work for. Mm -hmm. Do yeah. you feel like you've made that adjustment to now intentionally working to create that passion rather than just expecting it to be there? <laughs> I feel like, um in a lot of ways, we just kind of expect it to be yeah. there. I don't think that we've put in adequate work towards keeping that passion alive. I think that some other issues that we have in our relationship, like are things that we like to consider like our non-negotiables, um, where it's like, okay, I need this in a partner and she needs this in a partner. I think those things we have like put in a lot of work 
towards where it we it just kind of is a cycle like it'll get better for a while and then the same topic continues to come up but i definitely feel like we could put more effort towards like keeping the passion and romance alive it's just a little bit hard to do that when we're having a hard time getting along because of those non-negotiables mm -hmm. yeah yeah and i think that we don't intentionally all of the things that we already are going through it's like it's hard when you're just working you know what i'm saying you're just working you're not catering to the relationship you're not catering to even yourself you know what i'm saying so when it comes to like intentionally putting in that sexual effort and complimenting each other and stuff like that we just don't do it mm -hmm. enough maybe and as we are here you can see that you know what i'm saying so if we broke this down to kind of like three different buckets bucket one is just general communication that makes me feel disrespected or unloved right and obviously you respect each other and you love each other so the right. great news is that all you got to do here is be mindful of what triggers your partner and avoid that language mm -hmm. so when you say you know wheezy gets frustrated with you really easily what are some of the languages or things that she does that you're like hey it would mean a lot to me if you mm -hmm. even though you're comfortable with me instead of just coming to me automatically and correcting me or giving me that tone I would actually appreciate if you gave me more grace and patience in these areas. Mm -hmm. I think that I'm um, very much like tone sensitive. I don't really want people to talk to me with an attitude, let alone yell at me. You know, I've been like that since I was little. Like I would get if my mom would yell at me or a teacher would yell at me, I'd start crying immediately. Like I just. I don't like that and I think that's kind of like she'll call it passion when she's speaking to me and sometimes I'm like I just don't I shut down like I don't respond well to like anybody raising their voice at me or coming at me with like a certain tone that would be something that I'd appreciate if you didn't do or like even like cussing when we're upset like I would like for us to practice not doing that like not cussing at each other or you know being super offensive like calling each other names like those type of things like I feel w are not necessary if you're really trying to communicate with your partner and not just like be offensive. I would love, because we're not going to accomplish, and again, we're not in a therapy session here, and we're covering a lot in a short space of time, but what we're trying to just accomplish is like, what are the areas and the potential for growth, the opportunities for growth? And that's an opportunity for growth right there. So right. I just want to know, because you can't fix this in a day. It could take years to curb those things, because right. obviously that reaction, those emotional reactions might be learned behavior from childhood even. Mm -hmm. um, so that's work that you have to dedicate to doing up by yourself. So I would just love if in this moment you could reflect back to Natalie what you just heard yeah. and what your intentions are given what she just said. Um, you know, my intentions are never to make you feel like I'm attacking you. You know what I'm saying? So like when I am speaking passionately and I'm feeling some heightened emotions, I know it can not come off aggressive and I want to cater to you being tone sensitive and stuff like that. So, you know, I wanna make sure that I'm being aware of the way that I'm speaking to you so you don't feel like, all right, I just don't care about your feelings or I'm being angry or aggressive, you know what I'm saying? And just cater into that emotion so you know that I actually care, you know, and I'm actually taking what you're saying into consideration and wanting to do better for this relationship. That way we can get to moments to, even if we are arguing, it can be like, wow, she's being very sweet and it can even turn somewhat sexual, you know? Mm -hmm. I think in order for change to happen, you have to change more than just your mind. Yeah. Right, like that's anything else in life. I can't just decide like I wanna get in better shape today. I've gotta change lifestyle, I gotta change habits, I gotta put a plan in action to follow through with that. Yeah. So if, because the har one of the harder things to change is the way that we react when we're emotionally triggered mm -hmm. because we go into fight or flight and that's a very automatic system. Yeah. So in order to ensure that you don't snap at your partner, what other changes are you willing to make to make good on the promise you just made verbally? I think um, other changes that I can make is just, I think meditating more, you know what I'm saying? It, to keep that calmness and awareness is something that I like to do is, um, mirror practices you know what i'm saying and those things help me be way more calm of a, a way more calm person mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying so i think internally i have to work on myself before i can give all that to you you know and making that action so hopefully does that answer the question or yeah is 
is therapy uh, something that you engage in alone or have thought of engaging alone if anger outbursts are something that you're like oh i do that and i don't like that i do that yeah i've tried it and i think it was very beneficial you know what i'm saying um i just feel like i don't know it's just with therapists are just like it's like they don't get there you know they don't give you a but they're also just a regular human, so they can't give you all of the answers. You know what I'm yeah. saying? You gotta do the work yourself too. So I think it's helped so much and I've I've changed so much drastically. So a lot of things that she has say, um, said and mentioned, I've changed drastically. Therapy could, could help, but I feel like it's not that big enough to where it's like, all right, I could do this with her, the therapy sessions together, you know? And you feel like meditation is that solo practice you can do yeah. by yourself. There's m things that within your own mm -hmm. control. Yeah. And that's actually really helpful. Yeah. Does that feel like a satisfactory plan to you? Yeah. I feel like if it is something that like you actually, you know, stick to and can be like, um, like consistent with, I think it would actually really help because I have noticed like mm -hmm. when you are taking more time for yourself, like emotionally and mentally and just like creating like a peaceful space for yourself yeah i've noticed like it makes a big difference in how you react to things and interact with me yeah definitely let's talk about you <laughs> she let's can't talk. wait she's let's talk. <laughs> okay now uh what are you gonna do <laughs> well yeah i'm waiting for yeah. shannon asking well you. on the flip side easy also identified that there's ways that you communicate with her that light her fire mm -hmm. that are can feel combative or argumentative that create that need for her to feel like she has to raise her voice to you. Mm -hmm. So are you aware, when you heard her say that, did that feel like that was truth to you? Are you aware of that? That I can be argumentative sometimes? Yeah, I definitely would say I can agree that I can be argumentative. Well, I wanna just, I don't wanna put words in your mouth. If you would kind of re-express for okay. you, like what's the thing in your day-to-day -day communication that you're like, I kind of wanna see this change. Yeah. Um, I feel like something that I complain about the most in this relationship is my feelings being heard. I think that with her, I have to be gentle and the things that she says, like, it's not that it's like a never. So when she's like, all right, be soft, be this, be that. I'm like, okay, I can do those things. But when it comes to my needs and my feelings and being heard, they aren't reciprocated. There's always a but. There's always a because. There's always, well, you know, maybe you shouldn't feel that way. You know what I'm saying? And it's just like, it, doesn't, it feels like my feelings are being belittled 90% of the time in this relationship to where it's just like, dang, like every time she expresses herself and what she feels, a lot of times it can be an argument, but a lot of times it's like, okay, I hear you. I feel like majority of the times I express my feelings, it always ends up in an argument. You know what I'm saying? And that sucks to feel like, dang, all right, how should I express myself and my feelings in this relationship without it getting into an argument, even though it's me expressing myself, you know? Mm -hmm. And that's where it typically goes. How is it that you're upset about, you're arguing with me about what I feel, you know? Instead of ju not justifying, but, but understanding and catering to that feeling, you know? And that is a huge, huge reason why, like, this part of our relationship affects me romantically. Mm. I want to go into, I want to gloss over that and then I want you to get more specific because I think what Natalie did for you just now is gave you something very tangible and actionable that you can work on. Okay. Which is good and helpful. Yeah. But you're saying when I give you things to work on, the way that you respond doesn't give me confidence that I can be honest with you. Yeah. But I also kind of want to know what specifically is something that you're like. Yeah. When I say this is what I want to yeah. focus on. But I have a rule of thumb when it comes to that because it's very difficult to answer your question. Like, why does someone get upset that I'm upset? Mm -hmm. Because we're going to fight or flight. You know, that person attacks you and then all of a sudden now your defenses are up, your ego is up. Like, you're no longer responding from a place of rationale. Like, you're in protective mode. Um, I think a good thing to be mindful of is when that happens for you to be like, okay, right now I'm defensive when my person needs me to be receptive. And I use the analogy of, imagine Natalie, you're home and you're inside, you're watching your favorite TV show, right? And Natalie comes in and she is soaking wet. And she's like, where were you? Like, where have you been? You're supposed to pick me up. I was outside in the rain, now I'm soaking wet. You're mad because she came in really aggressive, but also, she's the one who's wet right now. Mm -hmm. She's the one who's disappointed. So your first priority has to be like, 
let's get you in dry clothes. Let me apologize to you because you're the person who's like really been impacted right now. And then after you're dry and you're settled and you're calm, now I can come to you and say, hey, I know that I let you down, disappointed you, and there was a miscommunication, but the way you brought it to me was hurtful. Mm -hmm. And I think that that in mind sometimes, whenever whoever comes with the problem first, see that person as the person who's been outside cold, wet, and irritated. And even though the way that they brought it to you may not be the most comfortable way, just get that person dry and warm first, and then you can bring your thing in. Mm. Wow, That's a that was a, the best example I've heard in a really long time. <laughs> and it was a great example of how she deals with things. And I'm like, I'm not trying to be funny. Like that really touched the spot. Mm -hmm. And I was like, dang, that's what I feel like coming in wet all the time. And it's just like, well, why are you mad? Wait, why are you yelling? You know what I'm saying? Well, damn, I'm out here soaking wet. Like, that's so crazy. You said that I almost got emotional. That's how I feel. That's a hard thing to put into practice, though, because human nature, yeah. when somebody says something to us that can feel like an attack, yeah. our natural response. So we mm -hmm. can remind each other of this analogy in that moment. To get and give that person some space to switch over yeah. into a common connect mode, but that's just a tool for you guys to use. And if you both can subscribe to it, it can be really powerful for relationships. Anyways, but going back to her getting something specific, right. she gave you something specific. What's one thing that you're like, I'd like you to work on this and working on this would allow us to get a lot more peace out of our relationship. It's just like that, per that example just gave exactly what I mean. Like whenever I'm coming to you with an issue about anything, I tiptoe about it. You know what I'm saying? Because I know you're sensitive. So whenever I come to you with an issue, I want to feel like you're going to be receptive en enough to be like, oh, okay, I hear your issue. But not say, okay, I hear your issue, but this is that. I just want you to be receptive and be like, you know what? Wow, I didn't know you had this issue with me. Or wow, dang, like now I could see it like that. Or dang, I didn't know this was affecting you, you know? Um, I want to work on that or, you know what I'm saying? I just feel like there's always an if, and, or, but, and because, you know? Mm -hmm. So if you can do that every time, or at least try to do that whenever I come to you with an issue, it, it will make me feel like my feelings are being acknowledged. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Without always arguing, you know what I'm saying? Because even when I'm not coming off aggressively, we still end up arguing even if it's a sweet way. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Because it's about, you make it about you. I feel like you make it about you instead of the overall bigger picture. Because it's like, okay, well, what am I feeling right now? That's not true. To, if this is Natalie, you, you're being receptive. This is what I, I feel. Like, I feel like, well, that's not true to me. Well, that's not what I feel. Well, since you're telling me what you feel, let me make it about what I feel, what I've been feeling. You know what I'm saying? Mm. So is that specific enough for you? I guess, yeah. I feel like it's kind of still a little broad, but like it's not like behavioral things I can specifically like pinpoint. Like, well, yeah, oh, I remember when I've done this, but yeah, I, I feel like I can definitely take in what you're saying. You're just saying like be more like open to hearing you out and receptive, and being receptive to you when you have an issue with something. Yeah, and just the but all that ties into how argumentative you are, and you know your personality and how you are is like very strong. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? And it comes, it shows, and you know that about yourself. So just being a little bit more passionate and soft, you know, because at the end of the day, yeah, I know you're used to dealing with guys and you you vocalize like, dang, a guy would never do that. But it's just like, I am a woman. Same thing that you want is kind of like what I want, that soft, sweet, and receptiveness, you know? Mm -hmm. Is defensiveness a good word to utilize here? That she's defensive? Yes. Oh, 100%. Yeah. So if that's kind of an actual point of, having a defensive personality because when we're defensive it's difficult to be empathetic mm -hmm. um, and be sympathetic so for you when you hear that is that something that you acknowledge and want to work on and if so what can you offer easy to say like this is something that i do want to fix for you yeah i feel like i could definitely see how you know being defensive of a situation regardless of the reasons that why I become defensive about certain things I can see how that doesn't feel compassionate to you or doesn't make you feel like heard and like going back to Shan's like example of like all right well you're cold caught in the rain so let's talk about that first I think that that's a great like way to look at things because I do find like I can think of specific examples where times like that have happened where that wasn't my first intention was to like make sure you're good first and dry and warm because 
I felt like, you know, whatever the reason might be, it's not, my intentions wouldn't be like, oh, let me make sure you're warm and stuff. But that could probably help diffuse the situation a lot faster. Um, I do think though, one part of what she said is like something really good for us both to take in and that is like, eventually you can bring up like, hey, now that you're dry and warm, like let's not d handle things in this specific way because I know that times where I've done that you'll say I've made it about me now where it's like even in the conversation if I did try to cater to you cater to you cater to you then I'm like towards the end like oh but you know babe like the way that you you're you know you said this I felt like that was really nasty towards me or whatever the case may be I'd rather you not oh now you're making it about you like I feel like any conversation we should both be open to hearing each other out or even if you're the one that brought it up you should still be able to hear something that they said in the conversation because it's not just about venting it's about communicating you know overall i definitely could say that like i can see how verbally making sure that you know that i'm hearing you and that i care can make the world a difference in a conversation between us when you're bringing something to my attention there's actually this quiz I want you guys to do. We don't probably time to do it here, but you should do it offline. So the same person who made love languages made apology languages mm -hmm. in acknowledging that people feel resolved in different ways. Yeah. There's five mm -hmm. apology languages. I only think the three are really different. I think they were trying to keep with the five three theme. <laughs> but like genuinely repenting is important for people. A makeup act might be important mm -hmm. for people. Or for some people, they want someone to take responsibility. Mm -hmm. So yes. doing that quiz independently and then being like, hey, I know that you said you're sorry, but what I really need to feel like resolved from an issue, like for me, I am an act of repentance. Mm -hmm. Like if you broke my camera, buy me a new one. I don't care how sorry you are yeah. or how much you didn't intend. <laughs> like that's not what's gonna matter to me. I'm like, do a makeup act. Yeah. Whereas my husband, Jared, is take responsibility. Mm -hmm. It's so much more important for me because I could go out and buy him a new camera, but if I never said, that camera meant a lot to you and I was really careless with it and I really need to do a better job of ensuring that I am careful with your property, mm -hmm. he's never gonna feel good about that new camera. Wow, mm -hmm. that's um, how you that's are, me. Huh? That's 100%. Responsibility. Yeah, I'm literally like that. I feel like she's like that with you. Like, you're like a, with, like, buy me a new camera, yeah. Active, yeah. What, what was it? It's like an act, I can't remember the actual term for it. It's like an act of restitution, I think it yeah. is, mm -hmm. but essentially it's like a makeup act yeah but i, I think feel like i'm like that too but mm. more so I, I i'm curious i will take this quiz because i'm really curious to hear what the other ones are because i it is about the act to me but that can get old for me if you just know to do something to like oh i broke this i'm gonna buy you a new one like that wouldn't be enough for me either i want to know that you're not going to continue to do those things because it's one thing to well to be yeah. clear it's not always like a purchasing thing i mean doing, doing the quiz is important because it could be something where it's like hey, like, I didn't compliment you on your big day. You know, you came home, you made an incredible speech, I didn't talk about it. For me, it's like, acknowledge you didn't talk about it, but what's really gonna make me feel better is the next time I can see that you did the action. Yeah, Or that, that t same day, instead you actually take the time and say, here's what I really thought. Yeah. So if I'm bringing something up, it's because I wanna see that action fixed. Yeah. Versus I don't need to feel like down the line or I'm so sorry. Yeah. That to be said, that's kind of an offline thing. I think that acknowledging, you know, how we just did, making mm -hmm. it really small, because sometimes problems can be big, making them as small as possible, like here's the next thing I want you to work on for mm -hmm. us. Um, and then also to ensuring the person heard you and feels heard by you. Yeah. And that apology part, you know, kind of to your point about, we already had this discussion hours ago, why are you still mad? It could be that you didn't speak Easy's particular apology mm -hmm. language. Yeah. You apologized in your way. Right, okay. I think that's, that's a big thing though with you too. You know that apologies mean a lot to me. And you know, over the years that you've worked on it so much, but you know, you gotta, continue working on it you know what i'm saying because it's hard she's grew up in a family where it's like all right we stick together anything outside of that we don't really care you know what i'm saying which is so understandable you know what i'm saying that you go as far as saying we don't really care not about like we don't really outside. care but that loyalty and love that i've seen that she has for her family is so admirable versus anybody else it's just like okay that's cool so i feel like with her uh, one thing that I always complain about is like, dang, like responsibility is like something that you really need to work on and apo being apologetic. That's one of my love languages. As you can see, whenever I do actions, like, I'm sorry, baby, what do you need me to do? Okay, what actions do I need to take to show you that I'm sorry? 
You know what I'm saying? So yeah. that's a huge thing of my, my love language that I think it would be better. And then lastly, I don't know if we want to make time for this, but we actually did get to loosely do this quiz, but I have a quiz. It's called Turn On Triggers People Should Do. Um, yeah. But in essence, it's similar to this. It's like what we're really doing in all of these conversations, just becoming more mindful um, and less an autopilot. Mm -hmm. So I think a big hard place to do that is when it comes to sex. Because mm -hmm. yeah. we're so used to like when it's good, it's good, and it just naturally happens. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The thing with turn on triggers is acknowledging that as you become more intertwined and there's less opportunities for that mystery, that you have to be more intentional about making passion mm -hmm. rather than passion being a given. Um, and turn on triggers is a way to address like what makes you feel hot and bothered. And I want to do that thing to even get you in that space yeah. before I try coming on to you. And interestingly, you both found that you are turned on by the exact same thing from each other yeah that you feel the other person's not giving to you mm -hmm. yeah and that's being desired being desired yeah. you know in my way i want to feel desired i want you to compliment me tell me i'm sexy every day and <laughs> like you know treat me like i'm daddy like i don't want to feel like i'm just daddy in the bedroom i want to feel like i'm daddy all day you know mm -hmm. not girl stop be quiet like you know what i'm saying it needs to be like all right if i say something It'd be cool. We'd be like, all right, baby, I got you. Like, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Instead of always being argumentative, always like, no, I'm not going to say that. You're not going to talk to me like that. You know, it's like, all right, not that you're a yes man, but you're somebody that can turn me on in a way to like, all right, I don't have to say something this time, you know? Mm. And let me, let me know that I am desirable and sexy and attractive and fine as fuck, you know, <laughs> because sometimes it makes me feel yeah, like, yeah. I feel like, you know, I'm not, attractive maybe I gain weight or is it this where I'm constantly oh, let me take my breath like she doesn't compliment me you know yeah so that would be nice okay well thanks for expressing that I'll definitely work on that more and it's crazy because I didn't know that that was like such a big thing for you I know that you've mentioned like a few times like oh you didn't tell me I look good like are you did you like this outfit like you didn't but I didn't know that was like as big of a thing for you mm -hmm. um but now that you're identifying that like I feel like I definitely can take that in and work on that a lot more because there's a lot of times I do look at you and I'll be like oh she looks so good over there and I wouldn't say it because it might not come naturally to me to say it but now that I know it would mean something to you, I definitely want to make the like attempts to say those type of things more. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like on my end, I think just like taking more action, like you taking more action. I think when it comes to like verbally telling me how beautiful I am and things like that, that means a lot to me. It makes me feel so confident in this relationship, but it doesn't make me feel desired, you know, right. um, because it doesn't translate to romance and sex and things like that. Like you might be able to tell me, oh, you're so beautiful all the time. But if that doesn't make you want to tear my clothes off or just do some really romantic, sweet things to set the moon, like it almost is just like having a compliment like from my mom, because my mom tells me I'm beautiful Oof, all the God. time, too. See what she just did. I there. don't mean like in an offensive oh, way, but, but I'm just it saying. Just, it feels platonic, not passionate. Yes, platonic, <gasps> not passionate. Do you get it? Am I like a mother to you? No, but <laughs> no, that's what I'm I. But that's exactly that's a great yeah. way of summarizing. It feels very platonic, not necessarily passionate. It's like wow, she thinks I'm beautiful, so I don't care. I'll walk around the house with my hair crazy because I know she still thinks I'm beautiful, which which is so great to feel that like confidence in this relationship but i do want to feel like there's that passion for me as well perfect is that surprising to you did you know that she needed more of that like yeah yeah i did because that's how i am naturally and that's how i was in the beginning of the relationship and because of all these things that we are going through i feel like i've lacked that you know what i'm saying so i i know it i've done it i've seen it i just gotta get back in the groove of everything that we talked about so it can be there you know what i'm saying and that's what i want to do yeah yeah all right well i think this was great this was amazing this was so good thank you so much Shan. thank you for thank sharing you. i think this yeah. was such an eye-opener i learned a lot it was so beautiful to watch two of you communicate the trick is to do this without a person and millions of other people watching. Wow. Because <laughs> whenever we have that, you know, that ideal of like, how are people perceiving me? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's kind of what we're talking about too, that comfortability. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. this is not a comfortable environment to be in. Yeah. So how do we take this? 
and duplicate it yeah. when we're alone. Yeah, exactly. that's so true. Put in we the should work. always put on a camera. We should start doing that. <laughs> no, but we don't have to post it. But I mean, I wonder if that would be helpful. That'd be hard to, like, to think about a camera. camera. No, I know, but like, imagine if we're going through something and we're like, dang, we need to talk through this. Maybe it would be beneficial for us to put on a camera to see even like our body language, to see how we communicate with each other. Of course, we'll never post it. We could delete it right after watching it. But for educational purposes, that might be helpful for us to see ourselves outside of ourselves, how we will once we edit this, you know? And we don't like want to perceive ourselves even like as like a nasty type of person. Like, so I'm not going to want to watch back and be like, dang, look at me not being understanding at all. <laughs> so it might make you be more aware. I don't know. It's a really interesting idea. I think that there's some fascination to that because then it, yeah. it does create that level of I still have to impress because it can yeah. get harder when we're in a relationship. And again, we share so much. But I mean, it'd be best to do it if you can just do it for each other. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, rather than the perception. But you start wherever you need to start. Yeah. But I feel like it would be for each other too, because I wouldn't want her to see. Yeah, see how nasty. <laughs> I feel that. You know what I'm saying? Like, and I'm sure you wouldn't want me to see that too. Like, yeah. I don't know. It could be something we could talk about it later and see if we want to try that. Okay. Yeah, that's the main thing. Keep talking. Yeah. Yeah. Coming up with ideas of things that could work for us. I mean, and obviously that would just be like a practice thing. It wouldn't be like we would do that all the time, but it would, might create some type of understanding that we didn't have before. And then if you felt like posting it, you could. Oh, wow. wow. Yeah. Because this is educational. It yeah. Is. Hey. Yeah. Make sure yeah. you guys follow Thank Shen. You. This was amazing. I'm glad you guys were here. Uh, Neezy Gang, we love you guys so much. Give us some comments below. Yes, please. Hopefully please. something that you heard today yeah. is going to help you in any type of relationship that you're in. Mm -hmm. And yeah, we'll see you guys in the next video. We love you.